Welcome everybody to the Rachel Holmes podcast, the audio experience. And look who's with me. Well, you can't see yes. it. <laughs> Thank God. She's back. I put a post out on Facebook yesterday and asked who did people want me to guess with on the relaunch of the podcast and you unanimously, your name pops yeah. up. It's only because I'm the only person that you can take the mick out of relentlessly and I allow it. I'm very kind of you that allow that. I think I think people do miss your wit, humour, charm, intelligence, contribution to the industry. Mm-hmm. And I think because you are so, you know, you're not always on social media all of the time. People like to see that little, <laughs> that little window of your life from time to time. Oh, Teddy, come over here. <laughs> Well, you can't. You know what? Now it's filmed. What you guys can see now is my body language. I've got my arms firmly crossed and my shoulders are hunching. And what did you say the minute when I rang you today and said I want you to do a podcast today? You went, "We're not doing video." <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. We're doing video. On video. Okay. So as this is the relaunch of the the podcast with you and I, and I think we're going to say state the claim that you're going to do this weekly with me. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Tell me about your holiday. We went to Porto Benus for a girly week and oh, um, it was great. It was great, but I'm, I'm, I'm recovering. I can't do it anymore. What's Not that I ever could. <laughs> what, so no more jaunts down Razor Blade Alley than to Linica's? Yeah, we saw Kerry Katona. That was fun. <laughs> what did she have to say? She didn't speak to us. Minions. <laughs> we were port side. She was Linicus. <laughs> <laughs> so what else has been happening then? Are you having a bit of a time out? What's happening? I that? am. I always take the summer off. So no emailing out. Very little social media. Very little anything. Um, and that's such a hard thing to do. It took me years to be able to do this without feeling guilty that I'm going to lose everything I've built. Because all marketeers say consistency, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And it doesn't feel genuine to me when when I've got nothing to say. Everyone needs to recharge, don't they? And this is my time formulating things to say and do and come back with a vengeance in the next couple of weeks with a brand new website. I think this has been really interesting because most people are going to resonate with the little story that you'll probably tell us now about your website and how And I've experienced this, you've experienced this. I think probably every fitness professional who strives to put some kind of credible professional website up runs into trauma drama stress it, it, emotion <laughs> it's been emotional hasn't it it's been incredible actually um firstly through my through someone that i have hosted my website with for years has always done my websites um, I was put onto a guy we had meetings and he spoke my language and we started the product, I paid him half of a lot of money up front and then it became apparent over the next six months that he didn't know what he was doing, that he couldn't do it. You know, then you look back and you think, well, if I'd just asked this one question, I would have spotted that, but it's the question you never ask. So that's, I've actually taken this guy to court because it's not acceptable. I didn't think he was a bad person. I just think he thought he could do something that he couldn't do really strange so that's that then I went to a company we had meetings and you know these guys have done the job but it's not been painless not at all really stressful it is stressful it's ever so stressful and it shouldn't be this hard and I do think that that industry should be regulated well not in 2017 if we were having this discussion in 2005 then you might ex- you might expect the ups and the downs, but not now. Yeah. Everything's at your fingertips. Or everybody says it's always at your fingertips. Oh, yes, you can do that. Yes, you can do that. Oh, that's easy. Yes, you can do that booking system. Yes, you can take that payment. Yes, yes, yes. But actually, when it all comes to knitting it together, if somebody doesn't understand that, 
you, you still yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the average person had bought the website that I've bought now, they would be traumatized because I actually enjoy learning WordPress and, the, and I've got the time and, and learning the back room. But really, most people um, would, not, would not do what I'm doing to understand it. And, and it's quite bizarre, the learning process that I've had to go through that they think is acceptable. Mm-hmm that I think you almost need a degree in, in, in whatever it's IT to be able to get this fight. It's really, it's, it's really weird. I mean, I sell someone a DVD and it doesn't work and they've threatened to call the police. <laughs> no. You know, for 15 quid, I'm spending six and a half grand here and there's just no one I can go to. If I don't like it, I've got two choices. Yeah, I think the web people don't understand how this is like your digital. You have if your website goes down, your income goes down, your business goes down. People can't find you. They can't buy your products. They can't book onto your courses. It's disastrous. It's a disaster. And then, never mind having a couple of weeks off in summer, your website disappears, and you. It's almost that you've wiped yourself out the fitness industry, really. Isn't it? I know it's so true. And, uh, and well, I don't know. I mean. It's 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 hard if you're doing more than one thing on a website. If it's more than information based, it, it it's it's yeah. So people will ask us questions now, but there's not enough questions you can go through. You need to see a website that is the same as yours. But there never is one, is there? Because you always want a bit of that one and a bit of that one and a bit of that one. And then the person will go, "Yeah, that's no problem. I can seamlessly put all of that together for you." And then. As we've this is what they say, and then they go away and seamlessly put something together that you can't use, and then they say, when you want to make changes, we don't make changes, you've got to pay for them. Yeah, they so anyway, long story short, it's been emotional, it's been stressful, it's been upsetting, um, but you've come out the other side, the website... Well, not yet, I haven't paid the bill yet. Just look. Oh, the website... We're still in testing, we've been in testing for three months, and testing's an understatement. <laughs> everything that you told me I was not expecting it to look and feel as it does and it looks awesome it does look awesome. yeah it's gonna be great this one has got a fitness suite and a yoga suite <laughs> so you know the yoga people can't bear fitness well they they can bypass us whereas the fitness people who embrace everything you know can go to both it'd be good it will be good it looks really good it looks really nice I think it'll be fun so when are you gonna launch it shall we have a party yeah, I'll be going into rehab once it's launched. <laughs> <laughs> so this month, you think it will be up and out? Yeah, and hopefully, but next week. Mm. And you know what I'm like? I think, oh, I'll wait and I'll launch that on the new website. Well, we went, this started in March 2016. <laughs> Didn't it? Was it that long ago? Oh, longer, actually. That's a long time. But you've, you've moved on to other designers since, haven't you? This has been... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all good. good. Anything you'd like to add if someone's thinking about getting a website? Yeah. Uh, get support. Ask us as well. Yeah. Do ask questions. Because now I think we've done it all on that. I think every single time I've ever had anyone look at... Because everyone looks at the websites and go, oh, you could do this, this, this. You know, Ryanair's can do this. And British Airways does that. You, you think, you know how much that would cost to do, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, you know, when you shop on ASOS, everything goes in your basket. And it's like, ASOS is like a multi million pound company. They've probably got a dedicated team of 50 on their website working on it 24-7. Um, well, you know, when you go to Amazon, it tells you what you might like it's just you know for the small little business like like us it's those kind of websites just can't happen because they are it, it is saying that you know this this website i've got is lovely um the actual you know i think on their their face to face they're great and the designers are great it's just the communication side yeah that the that's somewhat frustrating. I suppose because we are massive communicators as well. We we probably see flaws. Well, you, you more than me. <laughs> I 
and I think graphics as well. I think if you're dealing with someone who's very graphics orientated, they see it one way. And then if you're dealing with someone that's more technical, uh, they see it a completely different way. It's, yeah. Those two people, are, the creative is always very different to the technical. So it's important to find out what kind of web designer you're dealing with. Are you dealing with someone that's going to spend five hours on whether you go with the bright pink or the slightly bright pink color well, that's what i do i love that see i hate that and then somebody i know yeah somebody underneath that that wants to go yeah that's the pink but we need to work out the fastest way to get things in the shopping cart you know it just depends on what you you need to put my advice with not you but anyone is to partner on a website with somebody that's the opposite to you so if you like yeah. pain in the creative part you need someone that's more... Well, that's the same way we've always worked, isn't it? We do the opposite. We have the opposite skill sets. Because the people who actually make the website... I mean, I'm in awe of the guy that's made mine. But when he tries to teach me, they shouldn't be allowed out on the street. Communication is not their forte. I want to love him. When I sit next to him, I want to love him and lick his face and make him a healthy dinner with vegetables. <laughs> um, but trying to speak to him in the same language is not, it's not, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, no. And then I get frustrated when, you know, I've got a web designer who will say, okay, um, you know, it's, it, it'll take us seven hours to decide which colour uh, text or font, you know, and then charge me seven hours. <laughs> worth of yeah of course i would then say well that's a one minute decision i want you know so it, again it's all that everything's always down to communication yeah so you say one minute decision when i did it last time we chose the fonts that obama was using in his campaign i love that kind of yeah yeah my new sky <laughs> moving on what else is happening so talk about holidays there having a break why is it so key? yeah why is what why is it so key Turn your trumpet well, it's key for me because I'm exhausted by summertime. And you don't think it has any detriment to your business, your offerings or product services? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You've got to do what you want to do. For me, it's got to be genuine when it comes out. I've got to be feeling it. If I'm doing it just because it's routine, just because that's what I do week in, week out, I get no pleasure from it. And you know, I've always said if I don't enjoy it, I don't do it. So what have you been doing? Tell all. <laughs> Where do we start with that question? <clears throat> I've not been on holiday. I've not been away. Nose to the grindstone. Hoping to get away next week. Hoping. But it was hoping to go to Turkey, but there's been an earthquake in Turkey. It's always Has there? Hmm. Yes, while you were in... How have I missed that? Because you've been in Porto News. Okay. Probably. I think, well, the near earth cooking costs and it's affected Turkey. So I don't know, should be over there next week if all, all goes well. Um, yeah, just like you, just dealing with the ups and downs of business and, um, you know, juggling all the plates, sorting all the franchisees out, doing a lot of work on fitness pilates, brain fit, all the usual stuff. So I've got no real social things to tell you. Hoping next week, oh. we've not done anything, have we? We've been out for dinner a few times. Sitting along in our new favourite restaurant. What's, I think what's been, we've been seeing a lot on social media, and I've talked about this on the podcast um, previously, is how many fitness professionals are struggling and not making enough, oh. making ends meet, um, not getting enough people into their classes, um, finding the competition now quite intense because, you know, of every, all the choice that people have now, there's so much choice in fitness. You could kind of do everything and anything at any given time, either digitally or virtually or live. There's just so much to go at now, wherever you are. So it looks like the industry is going through quite a bit of turbulence. I think people might leave the industry, move into other things. What's your thought? Well, I think this is a mad one because, you know, it's summer. Number one, the weather's been amazing. So let me give you three choices. Um, I've been going to class from October through to March where it's been quite dismal. I've got nothing else to do. It's seven o'clock on a Tuesday night. It's now summer. This is what we can do. We can go to classes we've done every other week because that's what we do. Go out and meet our friends for a drink. We could go for a walk in the park. We could go on holiday. 
or none of the above. We could just sit in the garden. Which of those would you choose? Yeah. Why would I keep going to class week in, week out? My, I've taught class this morning to a quarter of what I would teach to in the winter months. I budget for that. I change the class. I love a quiet class. My income cannot, cannot ever rely upon what I take June to September. Mm. Personal training, do some special things. That's what we've always said. If you, this becomes a personal journey mm. of them coming to you week in, week out, you'll be broken. It will kill you. And it's not fair on them. I don't think. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think it's difficult. I think this is why you've got to, it's always the same every summer, isn't it, people? Especially in the UK. These two weeks right now are peak weeks. Everywhere's quiet. You know, I've just been to the tennis centre. That's really quiet. Down the shops, it's really quiet. People are away, although it's raining today. People are out and about. They're with their families. They're doing other things. And I think a lot of fit just take it really, really personally. And it's not personal, is it? It's just It's not. not. It's not they don't it's not that they don't like your class, what you're doing, what you're offering, you know, whether they're going to someone cheaper down the road or whatever. It's it's really not that and it's nothing it's just it happens every single year. Every single year that will continue. You know what else as well, and we keep saying this, is you look on social media and someone's got 100 people in a boot camp in a park, and then you think, what's wrong with me? So you think, my business is failing, what shall I do? Oh, I know, I'll pay someone 10 grand who calls himself a mentor who's going to go, what you need to do is start direct debit, tie these people in. That's a fucking fantastic idea let's get them to resent us as well for taking money out of their account every month because then they'll stop it you'll get fed up and you've, they've blocked you yeah there's so many things because if we take it personally or we break the business model they spare the people who start crossing the road to avoid us in the street don't come back because they're embarrassed no they've upset us start going to someone else who cares less I agree. That they can just rock up to. But also, um, you look at all the, the chains, and we were speaking to Kerry about this the other week, the Virgin, and people just don't seem to want direct debit. They want the flexibility of going to hot yoga, boot camp in the park in summer, fitness pilates, whatever. They want to swap and I want to swap and change. You want to swap and change. I want to swap and change. You don't want, you know, I've had a personal trainer for the last two years. My circumstances have changed, and I just can't get there anymore. It's not that I don't like the personal training or the gym it's just my circumstances have changed and it's just life isn't it it's just yeah 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 yeah. but like you say people see that and and you can see that the chains are slowly moving away from they'll have to move away from this direct debit model they will have to because people just won't they don't want to be tied into these things long term they do want to maybe they'll commit to six weeks eight weeks or whatever but i don't think they want this long-term tie in any longer do you? Yeah. No, and, and also, again, if instructors are paying monthly direct debits, I mean, it is, you don't, you don't see Ronald McDonald going on Facebook going, <laughs> everyone's going to Colonel Sanders. How <laughs> dare they? You do, you do, you do, if you're going to, if you're going to sell mass produced, you can't argue if people go, to mass produced yeah do, do you know if you're not offering a bespoke service um but even if you offer bespoke people are going to try something different well they will try something different which is again hence why you can't rely it's difficult just to rely on one source of income stream like this isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it is it is you need three things or oh, we keep saying this there is so much choice now, I think, you know, we, you're not just, you, and also you're not, it's rather than looking at what Beryl down the road's doing and charging and putting on Facebook, focus on what you're doing and your people and the people who are in front of you um, and work on, you know, cultivating more of the same kind of people, which is again why when it's good, everyone's happy. When classes are buzzing and busy, happy. As soon as they take a drop, panic stations, even when the times are good, you've got to be constantly, you know, thinking about how to get more people into your ecosystem, you know, marketing, trying different things, changing what you're offering, mixing it up, because inevitably, 
circumstances change. Yeah, and fitness has become a high street. Yeah. You know, it is. There's fitness everywhere. So if I'm on your high street and I set up a different shop, um, people are going to go into that shop and they're going to shop. It's like going into New Look when you usually shop at Top Shop. Yeah. I still know the difference in quality. But it just Sometimes if I'm after something another. special, yeah, yeah, I'll go to, you know, Karen Millen. Oh, it's that grade. No one has to keep, Karen Millen don't advertise and say, our stuff is so much better than Topshop. Topshop don't say, our quality is very much better than New Look. The customer knows that. But sometimes I want to shop at New Look and buy Tut. Oh, Jane, that's so profound. How, so true. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, but, and, and then, you know, when I want something special and, and if my means change, I'm not going on holiday and paying for the kids to go everywhere and da 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 da, then I'll, I'll buy myself something nicer. So that's why, again, this prof the, the, the special instructors will offer a multi level, yes. a multi tier. And actually, if you think about this, price if you think of this culturally, 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 this is what's happening now. You're not seeing people or the new generation is not head to toe in designer or head to toe in Nike. The, the trendy people now have got Asda plimsolls on, but they're rocking, you know, 200 pound Ray-Bans and they're mixing one pound t-shirts with, it's, it's, it's this contradiction, isn't it? This mix, this cheap, yeah. unexpected. We do it. Uh, you know, we, it, it, this is the mix now. It, it's the, it's, you know, you've got an eBay pair of jeans on, and you're rocking, you know, a pound's worth of, you know, trainers from Asda because they look really cool, but then you might have a designer, whatever. It's this, it's kind of this mix. And this is, this is very much how culture's going and it kind of. Yeah, works. but behind the scenes then, Amazon's killing eBay. Yeah. Or, you know, so yeah. very soon you won't, yeah, yeah, you won't be buying from eBay anymore. You'll only be buying from Amazon. Yeah. Um, it's not personal. Yeah, so it's, it's who's speed. the bigger business, and it's speed where we are. We are paying for speed. So if if you know people say the local gym, again, I use myself as an example. There's a 24 hour cheapest chips gym which is really close to me. So I've gone from really high end personal training at top dollar in my area, um, and it's just not convenient for me to get there now to a local fitness everywhere that's like. Hi, Jenny. 15 or 16 pounds. I can just run at any time, quickly, do my workout and come back. So I think that's, that's Jane, very good big ticks from that. It's so true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Everything I say is so true. I was just patting myself on the back for the tick. I, I am there. So fitness is high street now. You know what you're getting. So how can we kind of translate that back to the fitness professionals who's listening? What? How can they tweak their business to accommodate for that changing culture? That's the question. They've got to change their culture. We've got to change. This all started with that. Oh, I, that's what I've got to do because the clubs want me to do it. As opposed to, it's like we're saying, does it bother you? Do you think you'll lose your business because you're not emailing out? You know, well, I don't want to at this present time. So you've got to have the courage to say, this is what I do. Keep making it better, better and understanding it, I think, rather than just keep jumping from one thing to the next and expecting them to do the work, yeah. then being bothered when someone sets up down the street doing what anyone can do. So again, you come back to a range of services, a range of products, a range of offerings, different price points aimed at different people, understanding the, the market ebbs and flows. And this is the same across the board. It's not just in fitness, it's in restaurants, in shopping, high street clothes, everything, isn't it? Pubs. Yeah, and the de your delivery. It's, it's the delivery when someone walks in. We were talking about this morning, you know, we were talking about when boot camp became popular and um, it it was a habit for people to just shout at you like Sergeant Major. As soon as I went to that type of class and someone shouted at me, I was out the door. I know I want empathy. I want description. I want understanding. I want depth. Every time I go to a class, I want someone to tell me something that I don't know. And, and, you know, if, you're, if it's people that keep listening to the script, at some point, they know as much as you do. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's so true. But again, on the boot camp, you think if you wanted to do a boot camp <clears throat> or attend a boot camp session maybe four or five years ago, you would have paid through the nose to do it. It would have been expensive. It would have been a monthly direct debit and a commitment. The, le- the tennis centre in Nottingham, where I've just been to, is running free for all boot camp classes for two pound fifty. Anyone can go rock up. It will be that I can tell you the music that they'll be using. It will be the hit music that we've you know we've all used for the last five, six years. And, and so if you don't want, it, it becomes so part of this, the timetable now. It's that's diluted. Yeah. That's what it is. As soon as you dilute anything, yeah. it's cheaper. It's cheaper, yeah. That is mass. It becomes mass produced. I don't yeah. want, I then want to sign up for a direct debit when I can go to the tennis centre, which the instructor's pretty good and it's a good class and it's, it's you know, I, I don't have to commit. You're going to go there, aren't you, for the flexibility? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, isn't it interesting? What an interesting topic. Really interesting topic. Yeah, it runs and runs, and you've got to have the courage to step away, I think, and also um, the commitment. Because this job, sometimes people have so little time to dedicate to that hour that they teach. It's kind of a part-time job. It, it, it seems like it's so hard to step away from the treadmill or the wheel. It's not, actually. <laughs> you don't find you never find it very hard to step away do you what was that syndrome you were telling me about today that you've not got which is what oh um fast woman syndrome or something what's fast woman syndrome busy women syndrome fast woman syndrome. busy woman i was reading about it women are finding it really hard to conceive and getting ill because they're so trying so hard to keep up and move so quickly and yeah I'm afraid I don't suffer with that anymore in fact I need a rocket up my ass to get up these days in fact I feel like a bit of a nap now I'm a bit exhausted <laughs> when I rang you yesterday we're right, we're doing a podcast today you went no oh, god I've got brain fog I can't think no okay it's but- true <laughs> That was a really good, that was such a good analogy on, on the fitness industry. It is, it is high street now, isn't it? Thanks. Yeah. What other sparkling topics have we got? <laughs> what are you doing in the autumn then? What are you launching? Uh, we've got, I've got a lot of local stuff going on with the amazing Mike Bynes. Oh, we've got the launch of... Let's talk I about... Guru. Let's talk about our favourite topic which is have a studio so you're working with Mike Vines in Market Harbour who's got a lovely studio tell us about the setup that Mike's got it's Market Bosworth actually (laughs) (laughs) very different Rachel it's a very different uh, um, quality yeah Yeah. Uh, he's got a fantastic studio and he's got that magic touch and we've started a clothing brand together So that's taken up a lot of time and it's just been great fun because it is a passion of mine and his. And we've, we've, we've gone into production with a a massive line, invested an awful lot of money into it. So that will launch in the next two months. So you're entering a very, very competitive, busy market, busy space. Yeah. How are you going to make it different? What's your differentiator? Well, the, the clothing is, you know, the clothing, fitness clothing is fitness clothing. It's athleisure wear. We've made it, we've tried to make it, Mike's got this great saying, gym to gin. Um, I wear fitness clothing all the time. Gym to gin. <laughs> yeah, so it's stuff that you'll feel comfortable going out in. It's branded um, with the iGuru logo so that everyone feels part of something. And we've just been sitting down having meetings. Do we want to? Do we want to have a trade standard body power? Do we want to do this? Do we want to? And then we're thinking, no, what we're going to do is a kind of multi-level thing. And, you know, I'm, that's, I've always had instructor interest at heart. So the instructors will be able to buy it at a price and have parties for their clients and generate interest in the local area by selling the clothing, right. wearing the clothing, being, feeling part of something. So, yeah, that's all to come. It may work. It may not. Oh, we but are. we're having fun doing it. That sounds good. It's been a big operation, hasn't it? A lot of really it's a massive operation. We're importing in from uh, the Far East. We're having things made locally. It's just, uh, it's been massive. Learning, learning, learning. So you hope to launch it in the next few weeks with the, with the autumn, autumn winter line? 
Yeah, it's true. We, we thought October, we've all, all set for October. I think we'll be ready before then. So if, if it does, we're just going to do small um, local parties to start with. And then you've got the event, haven't you, coming up in, is it October? Yeah, I've, I've done something for Mind Mental Health, um, created a little yoga sequence that's really pretty to um, disturbed sound of silence, which everyone, when they hear that, just loves it. The Art Garf, is it Garfunkel track? And um, the instructors have brought it in, all the proceeds go to Mind, and everyone's raising money in their classes. It's beautiful. Um, I'm, I need to get it out there on social media so everyone can really see what the, these instructors are doing. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's lovely. We've raised pretty much two grand so far, and by October I want ten. Okay. Cool. And then do you, do you stop it then, or do you keep it running? What's the, what's the long term? No, no, no. We'll stop then and um, move on to something else. Mm, of course, as we do. Yeah, the charitable side is coming out. And what's happening with freestyle yoga? Uh, all good it, it feeds itself freestyle fitness yoga so we're all gearing up for uh, the September kickoff and um, that's going steadily I have been using different tutors and in doing that I've realized how much I love doing it myself huh. so you're not going to take your back seat you're going to be because we've, we've been talking about this a lot haven't we taking a back seat versus actually I really like going on the road and t- teaching. I do. I love it. It's, it's who I am. And so if to that means in 2018, I would definitely still be doing it. You know, obviously the other tutors will do it, um, but I ain't going nowhere. Good. Good news. Okay, cool. Anything else that's on your radar at the moment? Um, this year for me has been dogged by keep falling off my horse I haven't spoke to anyone since last time I broke my ankle this time he fell over on top of me and fractured my shoulder and split my head open that was traumatic that was three weeks ago but today I tricep dipped fully good and you got back on the horse yes I have well it's a bit too big to just leave I can't just leave it I did have a slight thinking that you might not go back on him no i love him too much that's good to know always good to know all right then jane it's been a good podcast really good keep we Thank you. love everybody listening to give me a rating go to itunes we want to rating tell us what you think what you like what you don't like um what you think. no don't do that that still hurts it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't. we've got the skin of rhinos we can handle it we've been- <laughs> yeah so yeah leave us a, a comment on social media i'll share this everywhere but make sure that you subscribe on itunes and leave us a review it's really important and let us know any topics that you'd like jane and i to tackle 